Hi, my friends. Um, okay, I need to make a video. Um, as you guys know, <clears throat> this week, my world has been rocked. I mean, um, really, um, things are happening that <clears throat> I'm thinking thoughts I've never thought before. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. And I need, <clears throat> I really need to talk about it. I know many of y'all are kind of concerned about me and everything, but, um, all this shaking has nothing to do with the coronavirus. It's like, that's pretty irrelevant. Um, what it has to do with is the information that has come into my hands the last month or so that is rocking my world. <clears throat> I'm gonna take you back to like what God has done for me so I can kind of tell you where my background, where I'm coming from so that you can understand what I'm thinking, okay? Um, Okay, back in January of 2009, God woke me up and he said, judgment's coming. It was the spirit that did it. It was not me. And he gave me exactly what was about to happen. And he took me to Ezekiel 14, Ezekiel 18, and Ezekiel 21. And he gave me a word. Anyway, that was the month that um, President Obama took office. And it was also the month that God began to unlock scripture to me. So then I began to see and understand what the prophets were saying. So I could, it, it took a while that I could assimilate, oh my goodness, this is this, but what's this, you know? And so it all kind of came in line, understanding came in line. And because um, the, the administration was so deep in darkness that um, <clears throat> that everything that was happening was very much against God and very much take God out of the country and you know and the agenda. I could see it and I could see all of Revelation playing out. I could see all of the the prophets playing out, and so I'm like, okay, here we go, and everything. <clears throat> well, then here comes Donald Trump, and um, it's like out of nowhere, and he comes and for the first time in a long time, I'm like, we have a little bit of freedom, a breath of, of fresh air, a little bit of, we get to s be Christians and it's okay. And so anyway, and then he starts making choices that are so much different from the other administrations and what they'd made and everything. So I was like, oh, yes, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But where does this play into prophecy that I've already, do you know, I'm already familiar with um, and I couldn't figure it out but I did know the Lord's like I mean he's got a revival here he's sending out truth right now he is sending out light and he's sending out truth and it's his agenda this is his hour it's the acceptable day of the Lord I mean the acceptable year of the Lord but it's also the day of the vengeance of our God so I need for you to know that but um so God has a big plan in this for his kingdom, but I'm not going to talk about the kingdom of God. My focus has always been on the kingdom of God and what God's doing. And so I kept thinking, okay, what's happening? Well, then about a month ago, maybe five, six weeks ago, I don't know, for the first time, uh, it has come into my attention about the cabal. And um, there's a, a YouTube series, Fall of the Cabal. There's 10 videos, and it exposed me to some things that I had never heard before. I'd never seen before such wickedness in high places, and it was all over the world, and it was like evil, drinking blood, sacrificing children, the altar of Satan, and all of these spirit cookings, and all of this stuff, and it was like pretty eye-opening, and then they're saying, okay, the fall of the cabal, and then... Um, I'm like, I posted up a, a video because I this, all of this was new to me and I'm like posting it, right? So I posted this deal that showed Joe Biden touching these little girls and he's got a problem and yet nobody addresses it, you know, and everything. So I'm just, I'm putting it out there. And every, it's funny, the response, everybody's like going, you can't say that. And then everybody started pointing the finger at somebody else. Well, what about? And I'm like, Ooh, what's going on here? On the heels of that, this lady sent me a link to this this young lady, um, probably Alexandra. She is rocking my world. So she, so I start clicking on her, and what she was saying made sense. Now, 
um, in the big picture. So I, I went on her uh, deal, Mark of the Beast, and she began to take me to Revelation, which I knew Revelation and everything, <clears throat> took me to the 13th chapter, and she said, okay, this is the Antichrist, the Cabal, and it's like I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, seven heads and ten horns. Okay, she said, what can be, it's Antichrist against Christ. What could be more evil? Could one person be more evil than what this cabal is? Well, I hadn't even heard of the cabal before, like just a few weeks before that. But she said, this is the Antichrist, the beast that comes out of the sea. Okay, so I'm like sitting there going, okay, this made sense to me. But then she came in and she started talking about the second beast. Now it's this beast that's gonna give us the mark and everything, but this beast came out of the earth. It's in Revelation 13, 11, and it says he had two horns like those of a lamb, but he spoke like in the voice of a dragon, and he exercised all the authority of the first beast. Um, she began to explain, this is the false prophet and the false prophet system, and a, a prophet is one that prophesies um, what is true. A false prophet prophesies something that is not true and everything. But <clears throat> it made me realize that this second beast is coming out to mm, destroy the first beast. Or really not destroy, but I mean, really, this is the, oh, the forces that are coming to take over and... Um, judge the first beast or all of these satanists all of these child trafficking and all of that and man this makes sense to me right and everything <clears throat> but then she goes in and she starts calling it out and she said this second beast she said it's not good she said you think that there's good and bad you know but there's not good and bad there is bad and evil and um, that this second beast has an agenda too. And she goes in and she calls out our president. And I mean, this is all like, you know, here, his own words. I mean, just the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> and then the Q and the Anons, the patriotic movement where we go one, we go all, which I just plugged into all this and it, it hits my heart. Yes, where we go one, we go all, and this patriotic, make America great again, and all of this, this is my kingdom, right? And she's sitting here, and she's touching my kingdom, that, hey, this may be the system of the second beast to usher in this worldwide dominance and everything, um, and, he, and there's two forces, and here's the deal, it's not predetermined, so these forces are fighting against us, uh, each other, the the dark side and the light side of Lucifer's agenda. This is rocking my world, okay? Because I'm sitting here going, the light side? The light side? Oh my goodness, because this touches my, my stuff, touches my country, touches my... And then um, I went to this... This really rocked my world. She she has a video, it's called An Inconvenience History. And in this, y'all, she outlines from the beginning of time, Lucifer's agenda, she calls him uh, Gadriel. <clears throat> but anyway, she goes into all of the um, new age, it doesn't matter, all of the witchcraft, um, it's too big for me, I don't know all of it, but they all merge kind of into one. She breaks it down from the beginning of time and what their writing teachings are and who they follow, but it comes down to Freemasons and it comes down to the light agenda versus the dark agenda and the Freemasons have this, this um, anyway, I'm sitting here taking it all in and in my mind, I'm like going, is it true? Is this truth or is it a lie? And with everything she was saying, my heart was telling me it's the truth. So then um, as she goes in and outlines this whole Luciferian agenda, um, America was part of the Messianic experiment and America 
in this kingdom is New Atlantis and uh, everything hinges on this country and what it does and and everything <clears throat> and so and the church plays into this too and then she goes in and she outlines how um, the infiltration of the churches especially the Baptist religion and you know how it was taken over by this you know agenda or whatever um, but it's probably all organized religions um, anyway she touches on people that I had held in such high esteem and high respect Billy Graham was one of them and I'm like the, when she touched on Billy Graham I like I pushed and I'm like uh -uh, not gonna go there and everything well then it's like I had to be I'm like okay God and I faced Jesus with my heart wide open and I said I want to know the truth and <clears throat> She exposed that the that Billy Graham was a Mason. Um, then you've got the founders of our country, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all Freemasons, all that. And I don't know enough about this to understand what I'm saying, but um, I do know that when I look at what's happened, everything that we, every part of our life is broken and there's nothing that is like really solid. And everything is a kingdom of this world and what is happening here. And so she's touching on my kingdoms, the church. And so I'm like backing up. I'm like, girl, and everything. But I'm facing Jesus and I'm opening my heart wide and I'm like, are you speaking the truth? Um, I need for you, if y'all are interested, let me tell you, if you're going to grab hold of the kingdom, one of your kingdoms of the world, touched Israel. I have a, a friend who is, you know, loves Israel. She's, she's like, you can touch anything, don't touch Israel. Well, I'm like, you can touch anything, don't touch the church and Billy Graham, <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, um, so all of this is like really um, touching my heart because my whole life I've tried to walk in truth and when God gave me the 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 um, parable of the raccoon I realized that everything is a truth versus a lie if we embrace the lie then it holds us in bondage and if we if we will turn our back on the lie and embrace the truth we find freedom and I found that internally I found that in such a way that it's like like you know nothing rocks my world well that was all here and everything <clears throat> now I've got to go in and figure out what I think about the big picture about things um, that may be agendas that are not God's agenda and do I embrace it do I is it the truth and if it's the truth do I reject what I've known to be true my whole life, turn my back on the lie and embrace the truth? Or do I reject the truth and embrace a lie? I mean, this is pretty, it's pretty big to me. Uh, and then what does that mean? Because what if that was my kingdom, whether it's Masons or the patriotism or the, the um, uh, church or what does that mean to me? And um, anyway, <laughs> Lots of stuff is going on in my mind. First of all, I'm like, sweet Jesus, deception is everywhere. And if Satan's, if Lucifer's, I think, psh, let me see if I get this right. Lucifer's the light side, Satan's the dark side. So the cabal versus the uh, alliance or the Illuminati, I don't know. Those two sides of the same coin, the dark and light side of the same coin. But what does that mean to me? And, um, I was sitting here looking at it and I'm like, okay, God. It says, if you are bitter, it says in James 3, it says, <clears throat> if, if you are bitterly jealous and there's selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying for jealousy and selfish ambition. <clears throat> these are not God's kind of wisdom. These are earthly, sensual, demonic. For wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, there, there you will find every disorder and evil of every kind. I, I'm, Guys, I see this in the church. I see it everywhere where people want 
I mean, and I think it's like good intentions to save the world. I think that our president has very good intentions to save the world. And I think he's gonna play out what his role is. And I'm telling you what, I'm gonna pray for him because it says pray for those in leadership and I will pray. And thank you, Jesus, for taking down the dark evil. Thank you, Jesus, for justice coming on earth. But what does this mean for me? It says, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times. Guys, that gentle at all times is really resonating in me. <clears throat> Willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and, and the fruit of good deeds. A good fruit, love, joy, peace, patience. It's like, it shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. This is a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper. If you're a peacemaker, then you speak the truth and the truth brings peace. It cuts. It's a sharp two-edged sword dividing the soul and the spirit and the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It is like the joints and the marrow. It cuts to the very deep part of who we are. And I think that's what's happening right now is that um, this is coming. But um, to speak the truth and be peacemakers, um, I'm going to speak the truth in love. I'm, I refuse to walk in the lie any, anymore. If I know something, if I know something to be true, I have to embrace it. I just have to. Okay, <clears throat> so it goes in here. So what is, what is causing quarrels and fights among you? I'm not going to go there. After this, it says, you adulterers and adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? And I say it again, if you wanna be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think that scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, uh, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously as the scriptures say. He resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Guys, with what I'm seeing, I'm like, we have a choice. We can either embrace the kingdoms of this world and be friends with it because we want, it's like we want to be accepted. I mean, psh, whatever, it, in our church or um, whatever, you know, um, or we embrace the God who is a jealous God. Um, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Can you tell that there's a lot going on in me? And then I, I bring it down to what do we do here? Um, because love those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who spitefully use you. Don't render evil for evil. Instead, render good for evil. If somebody wants your coat, give them your cloak also. If they want to slap your cheek, turn the other cheek. It's like, give to those who ask. Um, gentle at all times. But I do know that with what I'm saying right now, that the whole world is gonna start screaming. Okay. So what I do, I don't know. See, I don't know where this is taking me, but I have no option in my heart but to embrace truth, embrace the truth, and the truth will set me free. If I continue to walk and live in a lie once I know the truth, then I am without excuse. Um, up until this time, I didn't know the truth. So here's what I did is I walk in every bit of the truth that I understand. And I think God um, finds us faithful in that. And then he comes to a time where he gives us more truth, more freedom. Our God is the one that's in control of this whole big plan a plan to prosper and not to harm, a plan to give hope in a future. He knows how it's all gonna play out. It's part of his big plan, the light and the dark side of evil. My thing is that I don't wanna be caught on the light side of evil. 
I just don't. I don't want to do something that's going to cause a kingdom of this world to advance. Whatever kingdom that is, I don't want it to be my kingdom. I don't want it to be a kingdom of this world because the kingdom of heaven is within us. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what the Lord is showing me is I'm Savior. I'm Redeemer. I'm your friend. And um, the scripture that keeps coming up in my mind is whenever uh, Jesus turns to Peter and asks him, um, who, do, who do people say that I am? And they're like, you know, Elijah, whatever. And, and he says to Peter, he says, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus turns to him and says, you know, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my, my father in heaven, he revealed this to you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. I think the fact that right now that the God of the universe is coming to reveal himself to his people, he is coming. It doesn't take a person, although if our hearts are open wide, we will receive the treasures of the ages. They're being poured out right now. If we can embrace truth right now, it's a treasure. It is a treasure. And so anyway, okay, so what do I want to say? I don't know. Um, let me tell you, I just need to come out there and say that my world is rock. It's like rocking. This girl, um, probably Alexandra, and everybody goes, you can't like embrace everything she says, but I haven't seen one thing that doesn't bear witness with my spirit. Um, the, the girl is, she had a friend who was taken, who was falsely accused by the the Masons and what they were, um, he was put in prison for four years and it became a very personal thing for her. And so she began to research the Masons and through that she uncovered web after web after web. And so for six years she's been researching. She knows, she's like, she just put a piece of the truth here, a piece of the truth. And she said, then it all began to fit together in this one big picture. When she showed me the one big picture, I felt like for the first time in my life, that I understood, um, you know, where it's like, the just shall live by faith, but this is what the Lord says, you're gonna be my witnesses. You're gonna know and see and understand that I alone am God. Yeah, you're gonna see all this craziness, but um, God is the, the author of all creation. And this doesn't surprise me. He's the one that, you know, created the spoiler that fans the flames that forges the weapons against us. He did it. And so he's got a good plan, a plan to prosper and not to harm, a plan to give hope in a future. And his big good plan is that we, the bride of Christ, would be um, purified like gold and silver. All these things, these lies, these whatever that have been in, in us our whole life that we didn't understand, that now God is... Um, It's his, it's his business. It's his business. I just want to be clay in his hands. I do. I don't want to be deceived. But I can tell you right now that he's not going to call me an adulterer. Whatever that means in this life. Blessings, my friends. May you know the truth and may the truth set you free.